We want to check in with our media partners from the Voice of OC.org for an update on what's happening this week in Orange County government and politics. Here to talk about issues that are in the news right now, we welcome Editor-in-Chief for Voice of OC, Norberto Santana. Hi, Norberto. And Anne, thanks for having me again. Yeah, thanks for coming back. We're glad to have you on. As always, let's talk a little bit, uh, first of all, about uh, a recent grand jury report uh, discussing the, uh, the culture of corruption, as they called it, here in Orange County. Expound a little bit more on exactly what that means. Yeah, this grand jury continues to shake up the uh, uh, political environment here in Orange County. They uh, dropped a report earlier this week that basically calls on Orange County supervisors to establish or to study establishing an ethics panel to begin to look into uh, ethical lapses amongst elected officials throughout Orange County. It's touched off a, a, a very harsh debate. Uh, the uh, uh, certain supervisors, Sean Nelson, the uh, ch chairman of the uh, Board of Supervisors, has said it's completely unnecessary, uh, criticized the grand jury for going into a territory which he says they're unprepared to go into. Uh, others, like Supervisor Pat Bates, thinks that uh, there's a legitimate critique there in the sense that maybe elected officials can use a little bit more training. And then Supervisor Todd Spitzer took direct aim at District Attorney Tony Rakakis, saying that he had created a uh, tone of tolerance in this county in which there's just been not any kind of real prosecutions of elected officials for official uh, 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 misappropriation of funds or campaign issues or others. Uh, that's drawn an, an incredibly hard uh, rebuke from uh, Tony Rakakis's office, which says they have set up an office of uh, public integrity. Uh, they do point to some initial prosecutions, such as that of Carlos Bustamante uh, last year. Uh, nonetheless, the debate continues to move forward. We'll have to see. The Board of Supervisors has 90 days to answer, and we'll see which way they take it. Hmm. Well, how does it compare to what goes on in L.A. and San Diego County? You know, it's a great example. Uh, uh, Supervisor Spitzer points in L.A. to say there's an assessor in jail. Uh, you look at the issue with Bell, that came out of the district attorney's office, and here in Orange County, there's certainly nothing like that type of uh, activity out on the street. Uh, many Republicans for a long time have talked about the fact that District Attorney Tony Rakakis is there because he doesn't do this type of uh, work uh, overreaching or, or going out into the community and looking for political misdeeds. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll revisit that issue, I'm sure, in the weeks ahead. Let's move over to the Honda Center, though. They're in the middle of uh, a bit of a contract dispute with their concessions uh, provider, Aramark. Talk a little bit more about that. Right, nearly about 500 uh, public workers there. They work a lot of the part-time jobs. That concessions at the stadium are extremely worried. Uh, Aramark there has lost its contract. Uh, there's talk about the uh, stadium taking a lot of those jobs back in uh, in-house. The big question is that the workers say that they haven't been told anything and many of these people even though they're part-time jobs uh, you know it's almost become like a part-time America where a lot of people a lot of families uh, depend on two and three of these jobs to put together and they say that the tension that's there uh, is really unbearable for them. They've taken to in a sense the streets of the parking lot of the stadium. They're making their case directly to the the tenants there at the, and the patrons at the stadium and also this week they went to the city council. What they want is certain guarantees that their jobs will be protected. Hmm. Tim Ryan, who's the CEO, has said that he's going to be uh, addressing these issues when the time comes. Is this not a preemptive strike that they're using with some, uh, some union backing? Well, you know, I think, again, it, it, everything in life, all negotiations come through action, not words. And so I think that what they want to see is some sort of protection, some sort of uh, actual commitment as opposed to just some general uh, assurances. And, and that's basically what, uh, you know, what a union is for. That's what they'll do. They'll continue to make their argument both to council members and to the public. But the Honda Center uh, owners and management don't necessarily owe Aramark employees anything, do they? No, they don't owe them anything at all, uh, as, as, as you said. I mean, once a, a contract is up, a contract is up. However, uh, that's the job of a union is to, in a sense, try to negotiate for those workers uh, the best deal that they possibly can. Mm -hmm. yeah, changing topics now, the, uh, the Orange County Fair CEO didn't last very long in his position. What happened? True, uh, just maybe a few weeks after he hand-delivered a report to District Attorney Tony Rakakis from the Fair Board that in some ways criticized his own role in the failed 2009 privatization effort of the fairgrounds, uh, Jerome Hoban all of a sudden just announced his uh, departure to go take over as CEO of the Alameda uh, Fairgrounds. Right now the big question is at the, at the Orange County Fairgrounds is who's going to be in charge with the uh, annual fair just a few months away in July. Well, the other question is now, uh, will the district attorney have some sort of review of the situation over there at the fair? I continue to look into what's going on. 
Well, this has been a very controversial case for several years now. The DA did do a review in 2010. He cleared all of the officials of wrongdoing. Activists, however, have done an amazing job of continuing to uncover one document after another uh, about how those original contracts, and really what it's at, what's at question here is about $150,000 in lobbying contracts that were let out, laundered, uh, says this committee, uh, through official parking lot contracts. Uh, this is what the district attorney will now have to take another look at, and we'll see which way they go. Is there a, an obvious successor to this CEO position? Is there someone who would be the likely person to take over? You know, there isn't. Uh, what I have heard is that uh, one of the former operations manager there, Doug Loftrum, uh, somebody who did, in, in a sense, run the fair, uh, has been tapped uh, today, I heard, uh, after a closed session. Uh, he has been tapped to be the new CEO, and it looks like he'll be in charge of the operations, at least the operations throughout, while they probably begin a new search for a new CEO. Mm. Well, how's, how's the fair board uh, been looking from, from what you've observed? How, how have they been doing? Well, they uh, continue to sort of uh, revamp the operations. They've done some new hangar projects out there. I think one of the biggest challenges that they continue to face is to get this failed effort that uh, really dusted up a lot of ugly uh, uh, questions about how the fair is run and how the fair system across the entire state of California is run. I think this is something that they're trying to be transparent and accountable, sort of get it all out there so that they can move forward. Very good. All right, Roberto, thanks once again for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Thanks for having me. Again. For right. more on these stories and other political news throughout Orange County, go to voiceofoc.org.